Hello! Today we're going to be taking our 2D design, split the layers into planes, move them around a bit and have them automatically scale so we can insert 3D objects around them. We'll then be making changes in Lightwave or After Effects and syncing between the two. So let's dive in! I'm starting with this shameless self-promotion illustration in Photoshop. It could be a photo, piece of footage, anything you like really. The important thing to note though is that this is at 1920 by 1080 so I've framed my illustration to fit those final output dimensions. So let's get these layers out of Photoshop. There's a very handy export script under export layers to files. Select that, we're going to use PNG 24s with transparency for each of these and we want to make sure that the trim layers is off so when these are exported they're at full document size. Okay that, now if we have a look in Finder we'll see that each of those layers is exported at full size on a nice transparent background. We need to sort the geometry out now so let's get these images into Modeler. Don't need the background. We could set this up manually but if you've got lots of layers we want something a little more automated. Mike Green's Images to Planes is great for this, but as you'll see, it's a little bit broken on the Mac at the current time. But if you're a Windows user, this is perfect. Hopefully it'll be updated soon, but there is a way around it which we'll get to later. Turn off the captions, but we do want the plane direction minus Z, so it's pointing towards us. Size, well, we might be going to After Effects here, so 100 pixels equals one meter, so we'll put 19.2 for the width and height, 10.8, so it's basically 1920 by 1080. As you can see that's where the Mac version falls down. To get around this I'm going to use OD tools in layout. Take our images and drag them into layout. Open up the image editor and select those images. Hitting control space bar we want to search for billboards. Now we can't see any textures if we use primitive so let's select geometry. And we don't want any variation in our minimum and maximum height, 10.8 meters in both. And hit OK. For this technique to work, the camera and all the planes need to share the same X, Y coordinates. So in this case, it's at zero. Also, these planes need to scale from their center. So we need to reset the pivot point. The best way to do that is again, use OD tools to save all unsaved objects. Jump over to Modeler and F2 on each of those objects. You'll notice these are laying flat and in the Z, but that doesn't affect us for this demo. So that's all done and looking lovely. A quick note on the texture in while we're here, if we look at our little spaceman, this is what OD billboards are set up automatically for us. So the alpha is inverted and goes into the clip map. The only downside to this setup is that I can't find a setting for OpenGL that makes the transparency invisible. So I've been through all these settings, so if somebody has an answer for this, please let me know in the comments. So why are we doing this? The aim is to spread all these planes out along the Z-axis for keeping the design looking exactly the same. We could quite easily do this by eyeballing it, but if we make little changes, we've got to compensate each time. If we make a change to the camera, We've got to change it all again. We want an automated approach to this. But first a quick blast of theory. So with my best maths teacher's voice on. <clears throat> Let's start with what we know. Popping open Lightwave's camera properties. We know what this angle is. And we know what this height is. Trigonometry needs a right angled triangle. So have these two values. But what is this distance here to frame out design correctly? Tangent equals the opposite divided by the adjacent value. We get the adjacent by rearranging these two values. And boom, here's our distance. Do we need to reach for our calculator? F no, we use nodes. Now we have a deep understanding of how the tangents work. Let's put it into use. With the camera selected, open M for motion options and add nodal motion. Let's go for a scalar and we'll start with the height of the planes. 
Now we know they are 10.8 meters, so divided by two is 5.4 meters. Camera next. We don't necessarily want our camera to be the render camera. In fact, I'm gonna rename the camera reference and make sure that's selected. We wanna divide the vertical field of view by two, but we don't wanna do that manually. So let's get a divide node. And we wanna plug that divide node into the tangent node. Now we want another divide node here. We're gonna divide the height of the plane by the tangent output. And then we wanna make vector so we can plant that in the Z axis. That's great, but as you can see, we've jumped to the wrong direction. So let's just put a sign in front of that, basically to turn a positive into a negative. And as you can see, the camera now nicely lines up with those planes. So the X and Y are at zero and the camera is now locked into that Z axis so you can't move it. Here's a tidied view. So the vertical field of view of our reference camera is divided by two and fed into a tangent. Half the height of each plane, which is five meters 40 here. That's divided by the tangent. A sine node is then added to simply change a positive to a negative, and that is fed into the Z of a make vector. You could remember this every time you wanted to do it, but it's far easier just to create a compound node and plonk it all in there. You don't need me to describe what's going on here, so just follow along. Okay, select all of those nodes, select export selected and save those wherever you need. Just to check that's working, let's re-import that. And make sure the camera node is pointing to the correct camera and the height is the correct height. Time to add a few nodes to our planes now. I can't claim to have written this. It's basically a reworked After Effects script used by PT Multiplane. Select one of our planes and add nodal motion. Now we're gonna go for an item info and we want the camera here, our reference camera, and we want the Z output. Get an add node and we want to add together the Z position of the camera and the plane. We now want a divide. So we want to divide the added values with the camera Z position. And then we want to use that on our scale. So let's get a scale node. Use that as a scaling value and we want to scale the original size and plug that into the scale. Moving our plane is going in the wrong direction, probably because of the sign we added to the camera. So we effectively need to unsign that. So our negative now becomes a positive. And now we have a nicely scaling plane. And if we take a look at the camera view, you'll see we marry up regardless of where this plane is in the Z. Just as a safety measure, I'm gonna lock the X and Y so that I don't accidentally knock those off kilter. So there we go, it's all nicely locked. As with the camera, I'm gonna turn this into a compound node. So let's copy that tree there. Now the only addition here is I'm gonna get an item ID and point that to the camera so I can use that to change my camera name. So the camera ID into the compound, then the other remaining inputs that I need, open up the compound, paste in the tree, 
So the item ID goes in there. Remember, <laughs> remembering which connection goes to which. That's all good. Let's delete what I don't need here. Uh -uh. Gone. Great. Select these and export. Okay, that just replaced them. Uh, delete them and then re import them just to check it's working. Import. So my item ID will be the camera. I should really name these a bit more clearly. Position into the position, scale into the scale, and we have a working rig. So all that remains for me to do now is copy the nodal motion, select the other planes and paste. And it should be as simple as that. And there we go. Pretty painless. A word of warning here, if things don't line up or appear a bit wonky, if you turn off motion options for each of those planes, make sure the scale is set to 1. The safest way to avoid accidentally adding keyframes is to turn off those channels. Turn on VPR to see what's going on. We've got to remember this is all a live rig, so if you decide that you want a different focal length, change that and the plane should change accordingly. There's a slight delay of scaling updates, I think. Now it's a good time to add your 3D elements. I've spun off this tutorial using DB&W's Spline Toolkit, so I'll link to that in the description and at the end. If we need to add a bit of animation, we don't want to use that original reference camera, so we'll duplicate that up. Hit return, which basically bakes the keyframe and remove node motion. Rename it to something else and add your additional moves to that. Push it as far as you need to. As I'll show you, we could actually do this camera move in After Effects and send that detail through to Lightwave and it will all beautifully sync together. So speaking of which... A bit strapped for space to begin with, but we'll be okay. Under the In Out tab, select the camera and send to AE. A comp has been created for us with our camera in it. There it is, all the keyframes although there isn't any animation. We'll select the light and just for reference, we'll send that through as well. Selecting all the planes, let's send those through. And while we're here, let's select the rocket and we'll send that through as well. For some reason, the scaling detail isn't sent through to After Effects. It's just the position and rotation, but this doesn't matter in this particular example. While Lightwave is here, I'm just gonna render out a reference frame and save that out just to check everything is lining up. To tidy up, I'm going to remove the keyframes on the layers that I know don't have animation on. Uh -huh. All of those gone. Thank you. That just leaves us with the rocket. So let's trim the comp to the correct length. Okay. I'm going to import the original layered PSD and the reference that we just rendered out of Lightwave. And I much prefer to use layer sizes when working with Photoshop documents. To line our layers up in 3D, there's a couple of minor hoops to jump through first. The first is getting the After Effects layers into the same 3D space as the Lightwave layers. Happily, this is a pretty easy step. So let's create a new null. Select all our other layers and parent them to the null. Mm -hmm. Select all the layers and turn them into 3D. Copy those. Let's jump over to our Lightwave comp and paste them in. To turn off the light preview here. Now with just our null selected, we will move its position to 0, 0, same as the Lightwave coordinates. And delete. We don't need that anymore. Let's quickly put our reference render over the top just to check everything is lining up and we shall see that indeed all is looking good. The next step is to align our Photoshop layers in 3D space with the nulls. Select all our planes and for the position we will zero them out. Zero, zero, zero. So now everything's zeroed out. The next step is a bit tedious in that we have to parent 
each of our layers to each of our planes. Let's move the background to the background and zero that out. Finally, the next step is to copy and paste the script that I've left in the description to the scale parameter of each of our plane nulls. It's exactly the same script we used in Lightwave, but in JavaScript. I'm gonna hardwire the camera's position values here. So P for position, and there's that value there. So selecting the scale, option click the scale and paste into there. And that first line of description, I'm going to replace with that number there for the camera, 1728 for this one. Right mouse click on the scale, copy expression only, select the other nulls and paste. Very good. Checking all is working. I'm going to lock these Photoshop layers. Okay, select one of these and that seems to be scaling. We need to reposition our planes. Jump back to layout, select the objects, center AE. And because everything is synced, all those layers should now jump nicely into place. There's our reference, that's looking good, so nothing shifted there. Just clean up those keyframes. That's all lovely, let's have a quick look in our custom view. This spaceman chap is a little bit too far forward, so let's move him back a little bit. And I much prefer that position. The beauty of this is we can now go to File, Export, Send Selected to Lightwave. Hopping over to Lightwave, we will see that that has been updated. So we now have a way of making changes in either application. I've made a few tutorials about getting objects into After Effects, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. The only thing I'm going to add is this 4000% value no longer seems to work properly. <laughs> I found around 2600, about close-ish. If anyone's got a reason for that or knows what the proper value should be, please let me know in the comments below. So here it is loaded up into Element. Make sure the force alignment is from Model and also normalize size is ticked off. Create a control null for that. There it is down here at 96540. With our finger on the shift key, parent that to our rocket. Let's move that up so we can see it. And that should be now perfectly synced to our light wave animation. Now, if we go back into Lightwave and we select the rocket and we do an F11, so effectively isolating the rocket. Okay, so that's at frame 116. Let's save that. Bring that into After Effects. This is where our scale is slightly out of whack. So I'll just eyeball that. Make it a little bit bigger. Something around those lines. Okay, that's pretty good. It all lines up anyway, so turn that off. Don't need that anymore. Back into Element, texture it. Animate the camera or anything else that takes your fancy. And it could be that we don't even need to render out of Lightwave. This could be good enough for exactly what we need. Now that I'm happy with the animation it comes to the rendering, You'll have your own workflow when it comes to this. I'm using layers as matte objects here. And then I'm turning off the ones that I didn't need just to speed up render time. I also did a separate pass for the shadows. This is what the final comp looks like in After Effects. Very simple, just a single render pass my beauty pass and also the shadow pass. Everything else is still those Photoshop layers I showed earlier. I did change the light to a point light 
but that's only affecting the Photoshop layers. So each of the layers are casting shadows and accepting shadows, but aren't picking up any of the lights. So there you go, this one has possibly been a little bit chunky, but once you've got those couple of scripts up and working, you'll be flying in no time.